Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. Today we are going to learn about the combination syndrome in prosthodontics. Now, this is one of the favorite questions of the teachers for undergraduates as well as for the postgraduate students. So, it is important. So, let us understand the combination syndrome, the sequence of how it occurs. And before we dive into the video, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and join my lovely community. And also give a thumbs up and comment below if you like my video. So let's begin. Now the combination syndrome, it is also known as the Kelly's syndrome because it was first noticed by Kelly in 1972. It is also called as anterior hyperfunction syndrome and we will understand why just in a while. So what is a syndrome? Now syndrome is when we see a number of clinical features, right? Like you have the Down syndrome. So in Down syndrome, we find the patient having multiple clinical features. Similarly, in combination syndrome, we have many clinical features in the oral cavity. And it is found in patients who wear maxillary complete denture with mandibular distal extension denture. I repeat, maxillary complete denture and mandibular distal extension denture. That is the distal extension removable dental prosthesis. So let us suppose here is our patient and this is his maxillary edentulous ridge and this is the mandibular ridge with anterior teeth present. So how does the combination syndrome develops? So if we give such patients a complete denture for the maxilla and a RPD, distal extension RPD for the lower and he starts wearing it. Now what will happen? So since the patient has his anterior teeth present, just to get the proprioception, the natural teeth, they are, you know, they kind of give you a feeling Right, whenever you are eating something or drinking something, they give you that feeling, you feel them, right? So to get that proprioception, what will happen? The patient will concentrate the occlusal load on the mandibular anterior teeth because that's the only teeth he has, right? So when we have a lot of occlusal load anteriorly, what will happen? There will be increased resorption in the anterior maxilla. So the anterior maxilla will resorb and because of the continuous loading and unloading, we get a flabby tissue here in the anterior region. So what will happen? The occlusal plane will get tilted anteriorly, like anteriorly it will be upward and posteriorly it will be downward. So this will give a negative pressure inside the denture, upper denture. So here we are having two things. First of all, we have our maxilla resorbed because of which the labial flanges will impinge on the labial sulcus as well as the negative pressure. So because we have the labial flanges impinging, we will have something called as epulis fissuratum. Because of the constant irritation, we will get something called epulis fissuratum. And because of the negative pressure posteriorly, what will happen? The posterior tuberosities, they will start growing. There will be fibrous overgrowth of the tuberosity area. In addition, there can be papillary hyperplasia of the heart palate. So now we can see how the occlusal plane has tilted. So because of this, the forces on the distal extension denture bases will increase. And we will have a resorption in the mandibular distal extension area. Now when we have a resorption, the vertical dimension at occlusion will decrease. So you can imagine the retention stability now is getting compromised. Now because of this entire change in the tilt of the occlusal plane, the mandibular anterior teeth, they get disoccluded. So when they get disoccluded, like when they don't have an antagonist, in the opposing arch, they will tend to supra erupt. So, when they supra erupt, their periodontal support will lessen. Now, after they have supra erupted, they will again apply force in the anterior maxillary region 
and you know the sequence will continue the resorption again will increase in the maxillary anterior region so it's kind of a cycle right so this is one of the ways it happens the other way that it can happen is that with the time the patient's mandibular distal extension ridges they get resorbed so again here we will have a change in the tilt of the occlusal plane and the same cycle will continue like there will be supra eruption in the mandibular anterior teeth resorption of the maxillary anterior region and then because of negative pressure the overgrowth of tuberosity and it continue so this was about the combination syndrome now how can we prevent or treat a person who is having a combination syndrome first of all how do we prevent like a patient comes to you and he has some of the posterior teeth remaining mandibular posterior teeth remaining try to save the teeth as much as you can don't just go for extraction like if you can save the tooth by endodontic procedure or you know by any means save it now what is the better way to treat such patients instead of giving them an rpd and upper complete denture you can give a implant supported prosthesis to the patient over dentures can be given in the lower anterior teeth you can splint them if the patient has already developed combination syndrome we need to treat that like if there is epilis fissuratum ask the patient not to wear the dentures immediately we need to adjust the flanges of the denture give tissue conditioners the overgrowth in the maxillary tuberosity may need to be corrected by surgical procedures so these were some of the important information about the combination syndrome i hope you found the video helpful and do let me know in the comment section below if you want me to cover any any topic of your choice i'll see you in the next video take care alhafiz mm -hmm.